Hello friends, this week on Heat Vision Breakdown, we're talking about the five hottest topics in pop culture. The trick is, Aaron, we only have one minute to talk about each topic. And to keep us honest, Natalie has a stopwatch. I do. It's gonna be tough for you, so you talk a lot. Yeah, I mean. So HBO is making yet another Game of Thrones prequel. What do you think about that? Start the clock. Okay, this one is gonna be based off the Targaryen line. Anyone who's read the books know that the Targaryens have a very long history. It's been a while since I've read that, I apologize. <laughs> okay, so this series is gonna be based on the Fire and Blood book by George R. R. Martin, which kind of gives a history of the Targaryens. The Targaryens are obviously mostly well known because of Daenerys Targaryen, one of the main characters from Game of Thrones, who went yes. crazy and killed a whole bunch of people at the end of the series. Sorry, spoiler. Uh, this is a great, fodder for a prequel series because there's such a lot of history about the Targaryens in the books. In the original Song of Ice and Fire books by George R. R. Martin's and the Appendices, there's a very long history of the kings and queens of uh, the Targaryen line. Mm -hmm. A lot of craziness has happened in their past. There's lots of incest, which is great for Game of Thrones fans because apparently they love incest. Uh, sure. <laughs> there's a lot of infighting. There's something called the Blackfire Rebellion, which I really hope that this touches on because oh. it's a very exciting part of the history. Uh, there's a, a series of prequel short stories, novellas called uh, the Duncan Egg Stories which deal with that a little bit. Uh, the Targaryen line has tons and tons of craziness happening, and I feel like this makes more sense for a prequel. The other one is thousands of years in the past. This is 300 That could years. be anything. At least right. this one we have like a hook into. It's sort of like if they did a Robert's Rebellion thing. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> okay, yeah. Feel like I got my fill? Yeah. Okay, moving on to the next topic, and this one's for you, Aaron. Mm -hmm. Uh, Haley Steinfeld has joined the cast of Disney Plus's Hawkeye yeah. as fan favorite Kate Bishop. Start the clock. So, you know, this is a big deal because Disney Plus, you know, we, we already knew there were going to be a bunch of movie stars in there, but it's people we've seen before, Anthony Mackie, Sebastian Stan. Um, this is the first big movie star cast that's new to the MCU in a Disney Plus show. Basically, she's going to be playing Kate Bishop, taking up the mantle of Hawkeye. I mean, Haley Steinfeld, it's kind of like Tom Holland, somebody in their early 20s getting cast. She mm -hmm. could play this role for 10 years, potentially, you know. Um, you know, what's also interesting about it is She's also kind of the face of Apple Plus's, the rival streaming service, uh, one of their shows. So How's it's that work? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like somebody being in a Marvel movie and then being like, oh, I'm also a DC hero. I mean, to, to most people it might not sound like a big deal, but Apple can't be happy that one of the stars of one of the few shows they have is also going to be, and probably a much buzzier show over at Arrival, right. which launches their service 11 days after Apple Plus. But if you're Haley Steinfeld, you can't say no to Marvel, right? You need to, yeah, I mean, this could be 10 years of work. I mean, this this could be a career-defining role. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you did good. Mm. Oh, thanks. So supportive. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Nintendo Switch getting into the exercise game. Mm -hmm. Time. Okay, they're getting back into the exercise game because about 12 years ago, in 2007, they released the Wii Fit, which I'm yeah. sure everybody is familiar with. Wii Fit was a gigantic hit. I don't think people even understand how big Wii Fit was. How big was it? It's the third best-selling console game of all time, or at least on that console. Uh, it wow. was um, uh, sold 22 million copies. It uh, raised the extra gaming or health game revenue to over $2 billion in the first 18 months that it was released. It was a huge Two thing, billion. sparked an entire revolution. Everybody else who were the competitors tried to get in on this at the same time. Now they're back with something called Ring Fit Adventure, which is a crazy looks name. It's kind of silly. It looks like a hula hoop, basically, yeah. that you squeeze and you put around you, and it has a little leg strap, sort of like a garter belt. Uh, and what it is, is it's getting you off of the couch and getting moving again, which is something that they did with Wii Fit, but they did it in a way that sounded really fun. It was fun. Extra gaming has existed since the 80s, and people have been trying to crack that nut of how to get people to exercise while they're gaming. We've had games like Dance Dance Revolution, going all the way back to Atari. They had something called um, uh, the Atari, uh, I can't remember what it's called, it's called the Puffer, it was a bike thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next topic. This is for both of us. Joker won at Venice, made a yeah. big splash at TIFF last week. What can we expect from it? Start the clock. At this point, you know, it's not actually news to say, oh, a, a comic book movie might get Oscar buzz. <gasps> you know, I mean, it, we, it, it, Black Panther got Best Pick Nom. Right. I think this movie, you know, I think it's uh, undoubtedly will probably get Best Actor Nom for Joaquin Phoenix, right? Mm -hmm. um, Which will be, yeah. if he wins, only the second time in history that two actors have won for the same character in different films. Oh, interesting. What's the other thing? Uh, 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 it's uh, Marlon Brando and uh, Robert De Niro uh, for uh, Vito Corleone, yeah, yeah. The Godfather. One but two. this movie's also getting uh, some controversy because the violence feels too real for, for a kind of, you know, it's not comic book violence. It's kind of disturbing some people. Right. Well, so, it yeah. is 
the Joker, and yeah. that's sort of his trading card. And it also feels, a, a couple weeks ago, we had this uh, discussion around video games and if they cause real world violence, and there was a lot of people getting up in arms about that. That feels like kind of the same argument that's happening here. Yeah. I'm confused why some people would think one thing and then also think the opposite thing with this movie. Every time one of these movies comes out, people say, this is gonna change things for comic book movies. Right. Oh, that's my Will it day. though? Oh my god. <laughs> No, it won't. It won't. <laughs> okay, Aaron, I only actually came up with four topics. Way to go. Nice, so nice I, one. I don't know what we're going to do with this okay, one. Okay, so I'm going to help you out. Ad Astra is coming out to theaters next weekend, and I want you to talk about space movies, Oscar nominations, because none of them, even though there's lots of good space movies, none of them have won Best Picture. Maybe talk about that, okay? And go. The first thing we have to address is that 2001, one of the best movies of all time, right. was not nominated for Best Picture. Wasn't even nominated for Best so, Picture. It lost to Oliver. Yeah. Oliver won. So, okay, so space movies, you gotta give them more love. I don't think that Ad Astra is the movie that's gonna break through, though. <laughs> okay. I think it was, I really, really enjoyed it. It's a lot like 2001, but I don't think it's the movie that people are gonna be talking about this year. Are there monkeys um, in a giant obelisk? Can, no comment. I don't wanna say, I don't wanna spoil it. People should go see it. There are. But, um, <laughs> you know, talking about Brad Pitt, he's in Once Upon a Time. That is the performance that's going to get attention this year from mm. Oscar, if he, if he gets anything. Let's so. talk about more recent uh, space movies. Uh, Gravity did get a Best Picture mm -hmm. nomination. It won the Oscar for its director, Alfonso Cuaron. Yeah. Cuaron. Uh, but Interstellar did not get a nomination because it's a crappy movie. One of my favorite movies. We argue well, about this constantly. Taste. It's, it's not a good movie. Okay. Uh, Interstellar did not get one. Um, uh, Apollo 13 did get one, but did not win. Uh, what are more, some more recent ones that have come out? Oh, The Martian, Martian. was nominated it did not win as well that one seemed like it had a chance ah <laughs> interstellar sucks. The martian was great all right you've heard us talk but you have way more than one minute to let us know your thoughts right down there in the comments on any of these topics especially why space movies keep getting snubbed at the oscars or why interstellar isn't that great of a movie <laughs> stop <laughs>